New Buddha Way Dhamma Talks. Jeff Hunt presents a talk on some aspect of the Buddha's teaching. Start again. <laughs> Plus the usual attempts to confuse us all with time so that we may turn up at the wrong time, but it could be worse. What if um, they decided to change the place once a year? So we all had to be in Cardiff or Glasgow. Every year, change a place, why not? Change a time, change a place, can't we? We all meet in Glasgow. Well, I was born near Cardiff, actually, it'd be more convenient. <laughs> right, we're going to talk about rejection, including the rejection of uh, changing the clocks every year. We can't get quite upset about that, can't we? Why does this happen? Why do they have to do this? Well, that's what we mean by rejection, really. Um, the Buddha is not saying one shouldn't um, let go of some situation, and I think I prefer to let go of the time change. But what is or what I would think that is difficult about rejection, and we have to deal with it very carefully in Buddhism. Rejection, reject the rejection, and this, this, the, the other the other is that you know re reject re so rejecting is not a good thing. <clears throat> The bad thing. But on the other hand, we don't seem to be able to do without it because it seems to suggest that when we confront uh, wrongness in the world, we should do nothing about it. We should just be completely detached. And uh, in many teachings in Buddhism, it certainly does sound like that. An interest, it is an interesting uh, idea um, in, re in regard to Buddhism because it's, it's actually not clear. It's uh, surprising that, I uh, don't know whether you've noticed that when we talk about the second noble truth, we say uh, craving and clinging. What happened to rejecting? Now the rejecting, I add that myself. I always have done because it seems to me it's the opposite of craving. You crave for things and that causes suffering. But one also rejects things and that causes suffering. So why isn't the opposite of craving there in the teaching? Quite frankly, I don't know. But I, I tell you, the logic tells us that rejection on the whole is something that one has to consider very carefully. And it is the opposite of craving. So being a bit of a scholar in my spare time, I like to look things up in the, in the Pali Canon so, well, the solution must be there, mustn't it? You know, um, you've got thousands of pages. It must be there somewhere. So I looked up rejection in the uh, the index of several of the books of the Pali Canon. No rejection. Strange, isn't it? In fact, it's not quite true. There are only two mentions of rejection or nirata, nirata, in the whole of the Pali Canon. Now, one of the greatest um, experts on the Pali Canon, the, the, the Buddhist teaching, uh, points out himself, there are, he said so, and I, I believe him because he is the expert. There are only two mentions of rejection in the entire Pali Canon. This is, this is very peculiar because this is a subject that needs clarification. What are we rejecting when we reject rejection? Right, okay. So the first point is it could be seen as a um, complement of craving. A craving is, al is always wanting more. Rejecting is wanting rid of something. So I either want something and that causes me suffering because I can't get it or I can't, it won't stay with me forever. And the opposite, rejecting, is wanting to get rid of something. And that causes suffering. So it seems to me that these two things go together, one side, one side of the coin, the other side of the coin. <clears throat> but then the problem arises, doesn't it? Are we talking about rejecting everything? Uh, well, we'll come back to that uh, in a moment. So, when we think about the issue of that's very important issue in in Buddhism is that we human beings always manage to suffer about something or other. 
sometimes the suffering is great, sometimes it's not so great, but it'll come and go. Uh, but suffering is part of our condition. So is that the same then as rejecting? That essentially we are rejecting creatures. We're always rejecting what we don't want or we don't like. Is that how we are? Well, the Buddha doesn't really tell us whether that's the problem. Um, so it is connected, I think we can see that, with attachment. If I attach to something and I want it and I haven't got it, then I won't, I won't feel very happy about it. But if I have something that I don't want and I'm stuck with it, I won't feel very happy about that. So you see the two go together. But that's not what it says in the teaching. I, I don't know why. I'm mystified by it. I might actually write to um, one of the great translators and say, <clears throat> what's going on? What's going on here? Why is reject rejection missing? I want you to think about that. I mean, isn't a large part of our problem as human beings that we reject a lot of things? It's not just that we want a lot of things. There's an equally long list of things we don't want. Isn't that the root of um, discrimination? Hatred? So here come, you know, gender issues, racism, uh, all, the, all the dislikes, all the rejecting of others. We need, we need a, 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 a full Buddhist account of this. So you need to think about it. And I want you to think about it today. Is rejecting a bigger problem or as big a problem as craving? It's certainly, you know, not a pleasant thing to think about how much rejecting we do. But that's part of the teaching is that we have to face what is unpleasant about ourselves without forgetting what is potentially good and wonderful about and caring about ourselves. We are unstable. We tend to move from one to the other, back and forth. Okay. So let's, let's, let's shift it a little bit over to uh, rejecting of, for example, rejecting of self. So I can start with myself. Isn't it an issue that some people or some of perhaps all of us sometimes reject ourselves? That is, I wish I weren't the way I am. I might wish that I was three inches taller. <laughs> I might wish for this, I might wish for that. When I was in school, uh, many, 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 many years ago, um, there were some other boys there that used to call me i type because they knew that my mother was Italian. So they were kind of rejecting me as being different, you know. Uh, we might all suffer that in one way or another. Don't like our hairstyle, don't like uh, our our weight or our posture or don't like our language and so on. So there's a lot of rejecting going on. Why doesn't it have the prominence that it deserves as something that we need to be honest about? How do we explain uh, huge chunks of very unpleasant human behavior? Look at racism. What is going on there? rejecting individuals because of their race. But there's also rejection because of their class, rejecting because of their nation, rejecting because of their caste. Wow, we are really pretty good at rejecting, aren't we? We know that we've got a problem with craving, that we want too much. We've done enough damage around us to see that we've got a problem with craving. Haven't we got an equal, an opposite problem with rejecting, pushing away, not wanting, not wanting something around, wanting to, things to be the way that I want them to be, and they never will be the way I want them to be, and I become bitter, or I become cynical. Rejection, rejection is really a big issue. If I ever write another book, <laughs> 
it will be on where is the rejection? <laughs> where is the, it'll be on rejection in Buddhism. You see, the thing is that the Buddha does say is that we will always, our minds will always tend to go to what is lovely, beautiful, peaceful, nice looking, etc., etc., and always pull down the shutters on what is unpleasant about ourselves. And yet that, that, that is what we need to learn. That is precisely what we need to learn. He's not saying don't notice the beauty of flowers or whatever. He's not saying that. But when the flowers are faded and have gone all crispy and brown and not looking so good, we don't want to think about that. Just throw them in the bin and move on to the next bouquet of flowers. Are we, cap are we incapable of being honest about the dark side of human beings? We just don't want to confront it. But there's no hope for, for, for us moving on, really, if we, can't, if we can't confront that. I mean, take racism in America at the moment. It's a very strange thing that people get into that frame of mind. What's the problem? Why don't they just let go of it? It's difficult to understand, isn't it? But it's something to do with attaching. We attach, we attach, uh, we attach with craving to what we want. We attach with pushing away, rejecting what we don't want. So it's the opposite of equanimity. It's the opposite of balance. We swing back and forth. I know what I like and I know, I know what I don't like. That seems to make the world go round uh, in the awful mess that it's in. So I could reject others, all sorts of reasons. I could suffer being rejected. How does that feel? And what is going on in me when I feel rejected? I'm rejected because I'm too fat, supposedly whatever fat is, or I'm rejected because I'm too thin. Are rejected because I'm black or brown or because I'm white. What does it feel like to be rejected and why do I feel like that? What is at the bottom of being, reje being rejected and feeling rejected? There's nobody here now today that you know would, 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 would prefer to be rejected by others. We all hope that we are not rejected by others, that we are, what's the word, accepted by others. Being rejected or feeling rejected is quite a powerful emotion, actually. And we need to get to grips with it. That's the right way of putting it. <laughs> it's the paradox, there, isn't it, of rejecting 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 rejection you know one could get very upset trying to up, trying to let let go of reject rejection um think about that when we've had a cup of coffee i think okay so um we've got rejection of race class caste rejecting oneself reje not rejecting you know rejecting the way we look rejecting the fact that my hair is falling out whatever uh, we play that game all day, every day, and uh, it's, it's, it's one source of, of suffering. Okay, listen to, to two places in the entire Tipitaka where the Buddha mentions rejection. Right? I've, I've sniffed them out. <laughs> Somewhere, it took me about two hours, actually. <laughs> I sniffed them out, and uh, here they are. Now, what do you make of this? In one, one, it's in the Sutta Nipata, which is well known. The Buddha says, or is claimed to have said, attachments to views are not easily overcome. Having decided upon certain teachings, one then tightly grasps a view. Therefore, among those Basis, basis of attachment. I person rejects and takes up a teaching. Now I, I agree. That, you know the syntax there is really not very happy. So let's start again. Right. 
when I get into a discussion with someone or see something on TV, something say say something political, whatever that is, um, I will listen and then I will make a, a start to settle into a certain view about it. Once I've settled, I then I identify myself with that view, and then I defend that view. Then I start rejecting because the view is defined by its difference from another view. So I start on the road of, of rejection. So the better not to have a view, stay uninvolved, stay detached. Okay. And then you will feel much happier. But the moment you attach to a view, this applies by the way to religion, philosophy as, as well. Once I say Hindus are this, Christians are that, Muslims are this, and they're different from us. Rejection is now climbing in through the back door. Isn't it somehow better and more peaceful not to reject? Not to, not to reject, at least, you know, keep the door open. So I don't reject. Why should I reject Islam when I don't? I have never studied Islam. I've never lived in that culture. I can at least remain neutral about it, detached about it, and not jump to conclusions, because then the Buddha says, this is when strife and war are going to begin through rejection of others. Okay, then it goes on to say, one person, a person involved, involved in some issue, such as Black Lives Matter or whatever, is embroiled in disputes about certain teachings or certain viewpoints. But how and about what could one dispute with one who is uninvolved? So if a person is not involved in something and don't allow themselves to be involved, what could they argue about? They don't enter into the argument. They stay free. They stay open-minded. That's the idea anyway. So the Buddha says, nothing is taken up or rejected by him or her. He has shaken off all views right there. Now, I think the Buddha there is only talking about certain spiritual or philosophical views. And he's, because there were lots of arguments in his time, and he would bump into people of other view, viewpoints, such as the James, who were very close in some ways to the Buddhists. And then when one settles into a view of what, what Jainism is, reject it, it's not me, it's not Buddhism, don't want that. I've now closed the door. Anything I might have learned from Jainism is now I have shut the door on it. So I can understand, if that's what he means by beware of rejection, I, I can understand that. The other one, the second one, now this is where we see a change because when he's talking about viewpoints, we can see how we could adopt a rejecting viewpoint. Okay, we'll see that. But what about this? Uh, in the, also in the Sutta Nipata, do not take up or reject anything. Let neither of these exist for you. By these he means agreements and disagreements, liking and disliking, accepting and rejecting. Do not take up or reject anything. Right? Now, now, this is not, not talking about viewpoints, he's talking about anything, right? Now I'm starting to get into a difficulty here. Let neither of these exist for you. So now it seems we are aiming at a state of mind in which we have no, no views about, uh, uh, or, you know, which we, defend against other people. But now there's a danger of throwing up Buddhism with, with everything else. So there's a little bit of a paradox here, which um, I think should be, should be confronted uh, as to what role exactly uh, rejection can play, or is it left out because it's tricky? So if I go on a, if I go on a, a peaceful, march to object to uh, racism 
Okay, now it will be said, yes, you do, you can do that, but don't get violent. Right, I understand that. But if it says, if it's saying, don't be involved at all, um, I have a problem with that. So I just want to let, maybe you can help me to sort that out. There seems to be some reason why rejection is not mentioned, maybe because it is difficult, I don't know. But in the day and age we live in, that we've got two problems which complement each other, generally speaking. One is wanting too much and destroying the environment and the biosphere around us. Not good. We are cutting off our own legs. The other is rejection, pushing away, denigrating others. That is a major, major problem. Even rejecting the poor. It's their fault that they're poor. Right. So I think we need a Buddhism which can make sense of both of those, craving and rejecting. At the moment, it puts the emphasis on the craving. It doesn't put the emphasis on making sense of the boundaries of rejection. But I do understand that violence is never a good idea. Now, there are those who will object, but look at Myanmar, for example, now. The, the military government is just shooting using its, 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 its armed forces to just shoot at people who are unarmed. Now, when you hear that, you feel sick. You think that can, that's not right. Well, what are we going to do then? Are we going to pick up guns and shoot at them? It becomes worse, you get a civil war. It won't be a matter of dozens dying, hundreds or thousands will die. So, this is not my problem. This is not the Buddhist problem. This is our problem. We have to understand what we are and be honest about it and not let goodness and beauty go because of rejection or let rejection go because of our need for beauty and comfort and every, everything else that's good. Right, well, I'll leave you with that question. You've got five minutes to answer it. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, it's a difficult one, so I'll just leave it to you. Any any thoughts that you have it doesn't have to be an answer to the question. It could be a question. It could be anything that's relevant to the issue of rejection. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Back to Lynn. New Buddha way lets go of east and west and starts afresh in the life we have now. For more information, visit www.newbuddhaway.org.